Hi there, and welcome to our latest edition of Money Talks, where we take a look at the rural economy as it affects you in the ag sector. This week, all eyes turned to Europe as 91 banks went under the gun and were put through their paces to see how well they're performing in the midst of the global crisis. What's it mean for New Zealand farmers? Immigration is shaping up to be a big election issue across the ditch. Migration here has slowed to a trickle. What's the fallout likely to be? And the changing face and age of our population. Boom or bust for our economic growth. All this and much, much more coming up. But first, the whole world held its breath, waiting to find out just how those 91 European banks really are doing. We'll delve into this in depth later in the show, but let's go to our ASB rural economist, James Shortle, first off. James, how's it affected our markets, those tests? Well, not a lot, to be honest. Uh, we uh, initially saw the euro um, come out of favour for global markets, but um, you know the, the results were, were seen initially as being not too uh, not too sure what, what they actually meant. But um, but now um, I think the markets are pretty pretty comfortable with uh, with the outcome, and and uh, ha there hasn't been a lot of impact, to be honest. The New Zealand dollar hit a six-month high this week. What's going on? Yeah, the New Zealand dollar against the US, we've been trading between 73 and 73 and a half um, against the US. And probably the reasons for that, we've, we've seen that, you know, the stress tests in Europe were, were seen to be, you know, relatively positive. Only three and a half uh, billion euros needs, needs to be raised by those banks. So pretty small number. Um, so that was seen to be quite positive. Equities have been quite positive. There's been a quite a good, quite a good amount of uh, good economic data globally coming out. And also um, inflation numbers in Australia are due out on Wednesday. And and um, if those inflation numbers are quite high, then the Reserve Bank of Australia may need to start increasing their cash rate again. And that would push up both the Australian and New Zealand dollars. A lot of terrific earnings that weren't expected, apparently, out of the U.S. Give me some examples. Yeah, we've had uh, General Electric. They've been uh, they've been pretty pretty good. All of the companies actually between 80 and 85 percent of uh, companies in the U.S. through the second quarter have announced earnings that have beaten market expectations. And and I guess uh, markets have been up until now they've been sort of swayed between you know what the companies are doing and then also what. Uh, what the economy is looking like and, and some of the weak economic data and and um, you know they take both of those into consideration the economy obviously what's going to happen longer term um, the companies have been producing pretty good profits and the question has been whether they uh, have just been cutting costs or actually whether revenues growing and that's sort of longer term growth and how's the New Zealand dollar James holding up against the euro and the pound yeah, we're still we're still high against both the euro and and against the pound. Up over 47 against the pound and uh, and over 56 against the euro. So, um, you know, we did see a little bit of a weakening in uh, um, uh, well the. The euro uh, did, did, did weaken initially um, after those stress test results, but uh, that sort of panned out a little bit over the weekend, and now we're just sort of sitting in those ranges and probably going to stay um, in that range for a little while yet. Now, can we move to the sectors? U.S. beef. Apparently, the herd numbers are down. What's behind that? US, yeah, U.S. beef cow um, slaughter has been really high this year. It's up uh, about 13% on last year levels, and um, I guess the prices have been have been strong. Supplies in general for beef in the U.S. has been down. Australia, and New Zealand haven't been exporting as much, um, but you know the, those supplies have been well down. And I guess the the key thing to note in the in the U.S. sector is that this, they haven't been very profitable the last few years. 30% um, of the the beef, beef operations in the in the U.S. are all farmed by lifestylers or you know smaller. Uh, smaller farmers and they usually have off-farm income they probably decided well look prices are pretty good right now we're um, we're going to um, we're going to kill a few stock and and um, and get rid of a few cows and and that could have some lasting effects on the on the US uh, beef sector and and already we're starting to see some of those come through so what's that going to mean for our guys here well, calf numbers in the U.S. and they they are also down at the moment, and of course, of course, if there aren't enough cows around, then um, then future. That's, we're talking sort of two to three years down the track. Then that could sort of limit supplies, and I think that's um, that's sort of some of the underlying fundamentals which will come back and impact us here. And it's good news for for beef farmers here. We've we've seen prices um, relatively high on the international stage this year, and um, you know, looking looking sort of two to three years down the track, then we could see higher than average level. So if we see the dollar come back, then we should see some bumping up in, in beef schedule prices down the track. No big changes in the dairy sector. It's still holding pretty stable. Yeah, the dairy sector um, traders are going to be waiting until next week. We've got the global dairy trade auction uh, due out next Wednesday. 
um, and I guess they're going to be waiting for that. And, it's, and we're sort of in a little bit of an interesting phase at the moment where, um, you know, we've got the, the US and the European production that's just sort of hit their peaks. Um, equities have been in a bit of a uh, mixed, mixed terrain and the economy has also been a bit mixed. But there's some, you know, some pretty, um, pretty decent fundamentals out there that are, that, are, um, that are good for the dairy sector. And, you know, while we have seen some price decreases recently, we're still, we're still pretty optimistic about the, the payments the Fonterra pay out for this year and still sort of seeing it in the, in the mid to late sixes. And with the global dairy trade auction now scheduled for next week, what are you picking? Yeah, it's going to be interesting. It's, it's too hard to pick uh, whether, whether we're going to see uh, one way or the other, to be honest, with volatility so, so high at the moment. But I would, um, you know, uh, I, I'm, I'm picking that there's probably going to be a little bit more weakness. Um, you know, if there's a bit, bit of weakness, then I'm not too concerned about it. Um, you know, we are in the, in, the, in the peak of the season in the US and the EU, EU and they are the big producers. And another worrying trend in the US, apparently consumers are buying more and more dairy substitute. Is this something that's likely to continue? Uh, potentially, I mean, uh, we've we've seen um, when when I guess when dairy prices. So you're talking about uh, dairy dairy substitutes or dairy substitutes, yes. So uh, in terms of products, and that if 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 these other if dairy products prices are high, then uh, I guess they do look for alternatives in in, in other products. So um, you know that's potentially could happen, but there's still um, you know supplies have been down, butter inventories and in, uh, especially in the US are, are down to 2005 levels. So um, you know that has bumped up prices over the past few months. And and uh, the weather continues to play havoc with the world grain markets. What's happening there? Yeah, the weather across uh, Europe and in the US has played havoc with all markets, not only grain, um, beef. Uh, last week, you know, the average uh, slaughter weight in the, in the US has dropped sort of 3.5% over the past week, and that's all down to... Um, all down to the heat, and um, you know just, the cattle just uh, lose weight through those through those time periods. And, and grains, and especially in Eastern Europe, there's been um, you know big droughts through Russia, and uh, that has likely to impact on on grain production, and and could impact on prices too. And so that's good news for our boys here, right? It could uh, it could be in the in the future year. I mean, you know, grain prices are, are have been relatively low, so um, we could see some lifts off those. But I'm not getting too excited about um, you know big lifts out of grain prices just yet. Thank you, James. That's James Shortle. Next up is the chairman of the New Zealand Shareholders Association, Bruce Shepard, who joins us to talk money globally and here at home. But first, a question for you in our Farmers Facts and Figures quiz. How many million tons of grain will be produced around the world in the coming year? The answer, right after the break. So stay with us. Welcome back to Money Talks. Just before the break, we asked you how many million tons of grain will be grown around the world in the coming year? The answer, 1,776 million tons. Joining us now, Bruce Shepard, Chairman of the New Zealand Shareholders Association. Although just for one more day, I hear. Let's kick off the round with more about those controversial European stress tests. Bruce, were they too soft, too easy? Only seven of the 91 banks flunked. I haven't followed it, quite honestly. Um... I gave up at the point where the sovereign debt crisis sent them into a tailspin. It's all, frankly, nonsense. The central banks will just continue to print money and solve the problem and inflate assets and it will all go away because debt relative to assets will not be an issue if you quadruple the value of assets. So this whole quantitative easing solution that seems...